please turn in your song books to number 532. Though the way we journey may be often drear, we shall see the King someday. On that blessed morning, clouds will disappear. We shall see the King someday. We shall see the King someday. We shall shout and sing someday. Oh, 
would like to follow along, returning to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 will be our text. <clears throat> Just hours before Jesus was to be arrested, put on trial, and crucified, he took a moment while in the upper room with his disciples to establish a way to memorialize his death. There was little time left for Jesus to be with his disciples. Yet with those few moments he had left, he instituted the Lord's Supper. For Jesus to spend one of his last moments to establish this memorial, it should cause us to rec realize the significance of what we are about to partake in. Therefore, what we do when we take of the Lord's Supper is of utmost importance. What exactly are we doing? What are we remembering? And how should we meet the commands that our Lord Jesus Christ left for us? Let us read the text. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when we come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that, he, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I, when I come. <clears throat> to think of the body of Christ is to think about the immense sacrifice that our Lord made. It is important that we remember the physical anguish that Christ suffered as an innocent man. Jesus died because of our sins, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. So by partaking of the Lord's Supper, we are proclaiming freedom from the slavery of sin, and we are proclaiming redemption as we recall the sacrifice of our Lord and the covenant initiated to us through his suffering. We are not only sorrowful because of what our sins have done to Christ, we are celebrating our standing with God because of Christ's sacrifice. We are proclaiming to one another and to the outsiders that we are children of God, that we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he come again. Almighty and merciful Father in heaven, we come to you at this time to thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather around this thy table to remember your son and his sacrifice for us. And Father, we pray that you would bless this bread, which represents his body that hung on that cruel cross of Calvary. And Father, we pray that as we partake, that we do so in a manner pleasing unto you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Father in heaven, we come before you again, giving thanks for this fruit of the vine, remembering that precious blood of the Lamb of God, who shed that blood to wash away our sin. And we pray that you would help us to partake of this in a worthy manner. We ask it in his name. Seventy-seven, three, seven, seven, and we'll sing verses one, two, and four.
Stepping apart from the Lord's Supper, we will take this time to uh, lay by and store for the members here. If you would, bow with me. Our Father in heaven, uh, at this time we would like to come to you to thank you for the many blessings you have given to us. Father, for those spiritual and also for those physical. For we know that everything that we have is provided by you and comes from your hand. Father, we pray that as we give back a portion of that which you have so richly blessed us with, that you would guide our hands in the usage of this fund, these funds, that they would be used to further your gospel in this community, and that you would uh, bless the work that is being done here at this congregation. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Open your Bibles, if you would, with me this morning to Psalm 90, the 90th Psalm. It is the first Sunday of a new year. We are blessed with the opportunities again in this new year to be able to continue to worship and serve our God, our Creator. And I appreciate the presence of each and every one of you here this morning and the fact that you are here worshiping with us today. We are starting some things that are new. Uh, live streaming our, our worship is, is definitely new, even though we have been recording it and streaming it in the past as soon as services were over posting it. This will be a little bit different for us today. All the blunders are going to be even out there right away now instead of waiting an hour. But it's good that we're able to be able to worship together. I appreciate each and every one of you. I want to thank Ron real quick for filling in for me Wednesday night and allowing me to be able to travel to Georgia and attend the funeral of my uh, cousin, Greg. It was uh, very helpful to me to be able to go there. But I want to thank Ron for teaching the Bible class in my absence on Wednesday evening. And uh, thank you all for... Uh, being patient with me and, and allowing me to, to travel as well. As you see by the title on the screen, the God of the ages, Psalm 90 describes him to us. This is a, a New Year's sermon even, if you want to think of it in, in these terms, and, and that's what we're going to do. And Every New Year, we go through things. We, we make up our minds what we're going to do. We, many people... And I'm not saying everyone. I know some of you here have told me flat out you don't make New Year's resolutions, but some people do. Some people have a resolve to try to do things differently. But one of the things that, that happens for me at least when I come into a new year, I don't want to look backward very long, but I do look backwards a little bit. I try to reassess the things that have happened in the previous year. And I, I look at those things and I ask, what happened to the old year? The older I get, it seems like time flies a little bit faster. I know there are still 24 hours in a day and there's 365 days in a year, but it just seems like the time goes by a little bit quicker each year. Ruby, you'll understand that once you get past the age of 25. <laughs> But when you, when you think of, of the past year, we, we look at 2020, and I think some of the folks were thinking, 2020, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Or maybe let it hit you on the way out. I don't know. 
But we looked at 2020, and, and there wasn't a whole lot going on in, in that year that, that really, that many people counted as blessings. But do you realize that there were blessings in the year 2020? No matter what the difficulties might have, we might have faced, no matter if it was loss in, in, of family, no matter whether it was sickness, no matter what the trial might have been, doesn't matter if a political upheaval in a country or what, whatever you thought was horrible. And it doesn't matter about COVID-19. There are still blessings in this life and in the past year. Now, I'm not going to go back and I'm not going to recount all of those things for you. But I can find blessings in my life. And then I'm asked what happened the last 10 years, 20 years. Where did they go? But how can we find purpose for the future as we start flipping our calendars into the new year? And that's really what I want us to address because I really believe there are things that we can hang on to that don't change. Psalm 90 I believe, points that out to us. It points out to us that there are things that we truly can grasp and hang on to. And I believe Moses struck a chord in his matchless 90th Psalm. Would you begin reading with me at verse 1? Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even the everlasting to everlasting, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn a man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like a watch in the night, you carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up in the morning it flourishes and grows up in the evening it is cut down and withers for we have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath we are terrified you have set our iniquities before you our secret sins in the light of your countenance for all our days have passed away in your wrath we finish our years like a sigh the days of our lives are Seventy years, and if reason of strength, they are eighty years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And have compassion on your servants. O oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. As I said, I, I believe that there are many things that are found within this text that we can grasp onto. Help propel us into a new year. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things that I want us to be considering Along the way, and I'm going to, I'll get into the, the points of this lesson real quick. But I also want us to consider a theme that I have put together for the year for some of my preaching. Beginning next Sunday, not this being the first Sunday of the month, I would normally do this on the first Sunday, but beginning next Sunday, I'm going to begin a series of lessons called Lord, Increase Our Faith. And we're going to spend it a year. 12 lessons or so, the first Sunday of each month following this month, talking about faith. Some of the lessons are going to be talking about what we can add to our faith toward the end of the series. But I'm going to talk about faith. And this chapter right here in the book of Psalms, I believe is, a, is also a good beginning point for us to, to look at our God, our Creator, our 
the power of God, the God of the ages, and to begin to grow in faith toward him, love toward him. And there is one thing that stands forth. There is a great reality that is set forth in these verses, that our God is an everlasting God. You go back to Genesis chapter 1 and you hear, in the beginning God. You see, God was there even before time as we know it began. He is everlasting. And when time as we know it ends, He will still exist. And I pray that we will live with Him as well. But Moses sets this forth. You have formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting. He nails this down. He says, you are God. To the children of Israel, he was Jehovah. He was Yahweh. He was Elohim. To us, he is the same. His names have not changed. His character has not changed. His power has not changed. He is the same everlasting God yesterday today and he will be the same in the future you see people come and go friends they pass on people move nations and empires they rise and they fall people grow old and pass away Some die at young ages. But the matter, the truth of the matter is, that happens in life. Just like the grass, as the psalmist pictures, everything eventually withers away. But God, He's our dwelling place. He's that dwelling place. And as Moses really wants them to understand. He wants them to understand that He is our dwelling place from generation after generation after generation. And it is our responsibility even today to make sure that not only does this generation know who God is, but the next generation that's growing up behind us knows who God is so that they can teach others about who God is later on as long as God allows man to live on this earth. But in that great reality, we also understand when we talk about our God being everlasting, we talk about him in a similar fashion as to Paul when he did in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal, we look toward our Creator. We are looking in this life, not because of how horrible things were in 2020. If you think about it, there were horrible things that happened in 2019. There were horrible things that happened in 2018. But every year of our lives, what are we doing? Are we looking constantly looking back? Or are we constantly looking forward to the eternal things that God had, where God is? Are we looking backwards, or are we doing as the Apostle Paul mentions in Philippians chapter 3, pressing forward, looking forward to the things that are ahead, the eternal things that are ahead, the great one whom we cannot see is the eternal, true God. And so as we are looking at those things, we also know that He is the high and lofty one. In this great reality, Moses takes it back before the world's creation. Consider this. The great one whom we cannot see, being the true eternal God, he is the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, is what Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 15. It is he who alone has immortality, dwelling in inapproachable light, who no man has seen nor or can see, but will see in the future. Not in this flesh, but in the eternal bodies that he will give to us when his son returns. 
Before all this, though, he said, you are God. That word are, in my translation, is italicized because it's not really there in the Hebrew text. But when I think about it, what Moses is, is literally saying is, you, God. That might have been put in there for clarification, but I think it's just it's even stronger when Mo, if you just read it from everlasting to everlasting, you, God, you turn man to destruction. I look at these things and I, I see how Moses does this. There's not room really for a verb in, in that phrase there. When things are so rapidly changing and all seems unstable, here's something to hold on to. You, God, we hold on to Him. Not only do I see this great reality, but there is also a great reminder within this text as well for us to consider that our life in this world is not everlasting, that our life in this world is only temporary. You turn a man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it's past, and like a watch in the night you carry them away like a flood. They are like sleep, like a sleep. And then you, you hear him talk in these verses, and, and you drop down to verse 10, The days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 there is that reminder that we are just flesh and bone, mortal in our being. We have yet to have put on the immortality that is promised to those who are faithful. And we look forward to that time. Our life is not everlasting. Our life is brief. We look back on our yesterdays and we try to look forward and we try to set goals. And, and setting goals in, in the new year is, is a wonderful thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But let's make sure that when we are setting our goals, that those goals are still conditional. Those goals are conditional upon our being able to, to live in this world and, and aim for them and complete them. But the greatest goal we have in this life is to die faithfully. Is to be a child of God while I'm living. To remember who we are and whose we are every single day of our lives. And though our days may be few, live them for God. Live them for you, God, is who we live them for. I consider that and, and I look on and understand that a thousand years is like yesterday. I can't comprehend that in my mind. I can read it in words, but I cannot comprehend it because I cannot experience it like God does. You know, I hope you've enjoyed yesterday. Peter, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8, talks about being a thousand years is a day to the Lord also. But Moses, when he reminds us of our days being numbered, again talks about, shows us how frail our lives is, are. There are some in this auditorium who have already lived past the age of 70. There are some that are, that are approaching it, and some that seem, that seems like so far off in, in, the, in the distance future. I remember when I was in grade school, thinking of how old I would be in the year 2000. Thinking how old I would be in the year 2010 or maybe 2020. And I remember in grade school thinking, man, you're going to be old. Well, I don't feel that old all the time. But I can't imagine, you know, being born in 1957 and living 50 years. 60 years, seven years down the road, 70 years. 
but being blessed with life to be able to serve God. And I'm thinking that in those terms as well that I've learned a lot of things that in the time that we have and the brevity that is there, let's be thankful to God. Be thankful if you live to be 70 or, or 80 or beyond. Be thankful that, that you've had those days to be able to serve you, God. Well, our life here is brief at best. Our days on earth are like a shadow is what we're told in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 15. In Job chapter 7 and verse 7, he mentions, My life is a breath. Now, we all know what, how short a breath is when we, we inhale and exhale. Job goes on to say, We were born yesterday in chapter 8. The psalmist in Psalm 103 will point out that, again that as for a man his days are like grass as a flower of the field. Moses has said that here in Psalm 90. Now, you know, one thing I didn't point out in, in, in the 90th Psalm, some believe this was the first Psalm ever written to be the oldest of all the Psalms. It was written by Moses. And think about this. It, the truthfulness of this psalm has come down from generation to generation following him. The passage that we like to turn to, James chapter 4 and verse 14. What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. We understand that. But what you hang on to is God. Not how long you're going to live, but how you can serve Him all of your days. No matter how we think that time seems to fly by. And as I said earlier, the older you get, it just seems like time's going to fly by a little bit faster. You know, one day you're 17. The next day, you're 67. Where did all the time go? I don't think she was paying attention to me when I said that. Yes, she is. <laughs> One of these days that it's just going to seem like you can't get the clock to stop. Wouldn't it be great if you could freeze time for a little bit and not age and everything just stand still for a little bit and you get to enjoy it? Things, time moves on. And Moses in this is trying to get us to understand that not only is there a great reminder for us that all the parties and, the, and, and things that go on in our lives cannot produce true joy, it's empty without God. And therefore there's a great responsibility that in view of all of this that we look at our lives and ask how shall then are we then live live for God the psalmist provides the answers to that in verses 12 through 17 look at it and pay attention to it He says, when we face the uncertainty of our lives, every day is seen as a gift from God. How many times have you heard someone today say, why do we call today the present? Because it's a gift from God. The past is already, it, it stays in the past, but you live in the present. You live in a gift from God. You live so that you can serve Him and honor Him. You know, it doesn't mean that we must walk about this world thinking, oh, life's going to end real quick. It doesn't mean I have to have a sour expression on my face. It doesn't mean that I need to never have any type of fun. 
Imagine, you couldn't watch another hog football game or basketball game ever again in your life. Maybe I couldn't watch another Hoosier basketball game. I can't have any fun. No, that's not what this is about. It means, though, that each day should be lived with purpose. That each day's purpose should be filled with living for our God and our Creator. We should live our lives joyfully, verses 13 through 16. Look at, at that and, 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 and pay attention real quick and, and see what happens. When you return, O Lord, how long, and have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy. Here's how we can live joyful lives, understanding and appreciating the mercy that God has granted us. He goes on, he'll say a little bit later, let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. Under God and under the reign of his anointed, we can find satisfaction in his love and grace. We get to enjoy the fact of being family of God. Nothing else can satisfy the human heart as long as being reconciled to God can. Last year, our theme was God's amazing grace. I don't know of anything that should bring more joy to the life of a child of God than knowing that he is gracious, that he loves us, he's merciful, he's just, he's faithful to us. It's amazing to me that when I think of all the activities that we try to squeeze into our lives, sometimes our lives just seem hollow. And the only way to fill that hole there is with God Almighty. When we live with purpose, and our purpose is to live for Him, life changes. I'm not saying it gets easier. But I do say it changes. I'm not saying that, that you never suffer again. That's not what the Bible tells us. But life changes because attitudes change. Attitudes change because what you've experienced makes you stronger and helps your faith grow. And we look to God to help us through. I think about James chapter 1 and I think about the trials that we face in life. How can we count them all joy without God? We can't. We cannot count them all joy without God in our lives. And that great responsibility of ours then is to live joyful lives knowing that when we come through those things, we have come out stronger. And when we think about living meaningful lives, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. That almost reminds me of, of the song we sang where it said, Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Let the beauty of God be upon us and establish the work of your hands for us. Yes, establish the work of your hands. See, we all want our lives to make a difference. Don't we? We want to have, be able to make a difference in this world. best way that you can make a difference in this world is to tell someone about Jesus, to tell someone about God. If he can change your life, he can change somebody else's life. He can bring joy to their lives just like he's brought joy to your lives. And understand that when we do this, we're not talking about purposeless lives. There's purpose behind that. There is an eternal drive that motivates us that to, we want to live eternally with God, His Son. And the reason is, God is the only one who can do this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. 
And only God can help us live purposeful, meaningful lives. So don't live in this new year without God. What we do is worthless if he's not in it at all. And when you go back over to James chapter 4 and you, you read those verses there and, and you listen to how he, he says that you who say this, I'll do this this year, I'm going to do this in business. And he lets them know that your life is a vapor that appears for a little while. What he's letting them know is all of those plans that you were making did not include your great creator. They were trying to live without God. Do not live in 2021 without God. His power, it's in His power. We serve others, and through that service, we serve Him. You see, in God, our lives have meaning, purpose. Think about the words of Moses for just a little while. Ponder upon them today. That as we move in to the new year, how are we going to increase our faith with God's help? How are we going to overcome the difficulties in life with God's help? How are you going to save your soul by being obedient to you, God? That's how we save our souls. Now, if you're here this morning and not a child of God, if you have not obeyed the gospel, the invitation of our Lord, that opportunity is yours to do those things that he has commanded us to do. We talked in the Bible class this morning about listening. Moses said that you would listen to the prophet. Those who didn't would be utterly destroyed. Well, he was talking about one who was raised up like him. And that person being raised up like him is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, unless you believe in me, you will die in your sins. Jesus Christ said, if you do not repent, you will die in your sins. Jesus Christ said, confess me before men and I will confess you before my Father in heaven. He said, be baptized and be saved. Mark chapter 16. Listen to him. Be buried in baptism for the remission of your sins. To rise and walk in newness of life. Start the new year out living for God. And live a meaningful, purposeful life the rest of your days. If you need to be reconciled to God, and we can help you in that this morning, won't you come as together we stand and as we sing. Bring Christ to
here this morning, you are an encouragement to every one of us. We intend to meet again this evening at uh, 5 o'clock with a service very much like the one that we have just completed. I hope you will make your plans to be here because I know that Brian has put a lot of work and a lot of effort into the lesson that he will bring this evening. And we sure wouldn't want that to go to waste. So we look forward to seeing you back here this evening at 5 o'clock. Also, Ron handed me a note that Hattie Spradley's aunt, her name is Lou Kale, she's 90 years young, she has contracted the COVID virus. So let's please remember her and Patty in our prayers. Now, number 239, we'll sing verse one, and we'll be dismissed in prayer. <clears throat> Sweetly 